It's another episode of Beyond the Altar to the Tomb of Lost Souls for Halloween. <laughs> we are actually recording at Spirit Halloween Shop in uh, Uptown Mall in Wilmer. They, That's right. They are tolerating this uh, particular session here, and we appreciate it. You should come. It's a, an amazing pop-up store for Halloween. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty fun. I see you've each picked out a toy. Yeah. yeah. You're going with creepy clown, Dane. Hate clowns, so <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. For $69.99, you could take home this creepy toddler. I think what this does the is... toddler do? Uh, well, I've turned, button. Yeah, I've turned off the button. Oh. Otherwise, it would be doing it the entire <laughs> podcast. But it's, it's super creepy. Come check yeah. it out. Oh. So, uh, right off the bat, we're here at the Tomb of Lost Souls. And, uh, you know, that's what we conjure up at Halloween is the souls, the spirits... The ghosts. The zombies. Zombies. I don't know what this Freaky is. clowns. What is it that makes the the spirits that you, you talk on Sunday morning about the Holy Spirit? Mm-hmm. But why do they get so creepy on Halloween? <laughs> I think it's just because of the fun of it and people like to have fun scaring each other and all the rest. and. Yeah turns a myth into a bigger myth and all that so sure there's like an a really old church connection with like uh the eve of uh, all saints day so all saints uh day would be november 1st so this is all hollows eve all yeah 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 um, spirits eve october yeah. 31st yes yeah so you said origins in the church or in a, yeah. a church like a pagan church no, origins in the church, right? Like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, November 1st was a major Christian celebration, remembering the those who have gone before us, the saints of old, uh, who have paved the way for, for where we are today. And like any good church thing, we're pretty good at co-opting pagan holidays yeah. as well. And so oh. they had celebration of the spirits in the fall and church kind of took that over and said we'll make that a church holiday ah so some people have said wow christmas really had its roots in paganism to, like that is yeah that's another pod that's the christmas podcast <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. Uh, stick with us for that yeah follow us so you don't miss it some watching right now from the church or any church might be clutching their pearls a little bit some are like yeah I love Halloween. Yeah. I, I've got the uh, creepy decorations in my yard. How do we find a, a fit in that? Well, uh, you know, we continue to say we're the church that likes to have fun and uh, remember what people are focused on every time of year. And so at the end of October, everybody knows it's Halloween, right? And so how do we co opt that ourselves and say, like, this is a place where we can have fun as a church, too? Mm-hmm. It's just Halloween. Uh, it's not like we're glorifying dark or evil forces, Justin. <laughs> right. No, I think it's about it's about meeting people where they're at. It's part of a fun, festive, you know, community holiday. And for the church to to step out of that means you know the the church becomes irrelevant to that day. And I think, you know, I, there's ways to to live into the spirit of generosity for Halloween. Like it's kind of exceptional that communities all over our country will be like just giving away free candy to kids um you know so living into that spirit of generosity i think the church can be celebrating and giving away some of that too and and preparing at the same time for you know a a day to celebrate those saints who have gone before us who have who have brought us to where we are today in the church as well the generosity of giving halloween halloween candy but we're making them beg for it. This is, is that. Yeah. Is that really what? We're, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Are, yeah. You really want candy? Yeah. What do you? You, yeah. know? you really want the blessings of church? You know, you got to beg for it, for right? It. No. What about the trick part of it? I don't even know how that began, honestly. Mm. But in in my mind, it seems like it should say treat or trick. Right? Yeah. Treat doesn't yeah. sound as good. Or I'll yeah. egg your house. I always hated the guy who came to the door and said, like, I want to see the trick. Oh, that's me. And oh. I was like, no, no. Oh, no, I'm the one who says. kind of creepy for a little kid. <laughs> you know, you'll get, especially like, say, a preteen, you know, they slapped on some makeup. Yeah. They rap on the door, and I open it. Silence. I go, what? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to say the words say to get the candy. Uh, this may uh, come as a surprise to you, but I was even more curmudgeonly several years ago, like pre-COVID. Like, you know what, you're too old to be trick-or-treating. What, what are you anyway? And, and then somebody said, you know what, we don't know where each kid is yeah. in their development even. Or yeah. if, if they're going to the trouble to come out, it beats a lot of things they could be doing That's on true. Halloween. Right. Right. That's true. So now I, you know, I do always give them the candy. But I still say, what? Are you going to say it? Yeah, I like that. I like yeah. that. What does Halloween look like at your house? At my house, uh, we've turned it into kind of a you know family fun day, right, with our our kids, and so we meet up with some other friends who have kids of similar ages. We do some trick or treating, and honestly, like at this point, like my kids seem equally as excited about staying at the house, answering the door when kids come, and, and being able to give away that candy as they do about getting it themselves. It's funny the three of them have different attitudes about how quickly the candy disappears. I've got one kid; it'll be gone in like two weeks, and. I've got another kid that, you know, at Easter, we throw out the Halloween candy oh, wow. to make room for the, the Easter candy. And your house? Uh, so the last few years, uh, Vinci has hosted a trail of treats, and so I get to go there with my family, and then um, then we just drop by people we care about houses, and they're happy to have a conversation for a little while and hand out candy to our kids, and it's pretty fun. Your daughter is... 13? 12. 12? Yeah. But she's getting to that age. Yeah. Does she want to trick or treat? Does she want to go out or is she more? I think she's still into the trick or treating, yeah. but I she loves to hand out the candy and that's her favorite thing too. So it's pretty fun to watch that. I love to hand it out. I've lived in Wilmer now nine years. And when we moved here, I was so excited. It's Wilmer, it's bigger than Montevideo. We're in the center of town. Yeah. We're going to have loads. And I'm looking down the block, like, where is everybody? I, I think because there are a lot of events yeah. uh, that people have a chance to go to. And then I have that house down the block. Mm -hmm. You know, the house oh, yeah. I'm talking that about. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like they bought half of what is in Spirit Halloween yes. store here mm -hmm. and decorated their house with it. Speaking of houses, I see what you think of this. My youth group. I mean, when I was in the youth group. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is 122 yeah. years ago. It's been a while. The pastors, it was a married couple, young. We loved them because mm -hmm. they were fun, like you guys. Yeah. So much fun. They let us do a haunted house around the church and even scenes in the sanctuary. Ooh. What do you think of that? It's not a bad idea. It sounds like yeah. fun. Probably wouldn't do it on a Sunday morning well, during no. worship. But. No. It was yeah. probably a Wednesday evening. Yeah. Your thought, uh, could you see where people would have a problem with that? Sure. I think, like, uh, people always kind of have, like, a sense, you know, some folks always have that sense that the church is supposed to be set apart, the sanctuary is supposed to be set apart, pastors are supposed to be set apart from the rest of, you know, society to keep it somehow holy. Uh, I think everything that we see from who God is and who Jesus is, is God's real interest in, in jumping right in the, to the midst of that, right? Jesus comes out and is born right into the midst of it, doesn't have an interest of being set apart, uh, but wants to be right there in the middle yeah. with us. And I think Halloween shows a curiosity with what happens after we die. You know, do we turn into a zombie? <laughs> Does our skull become a pumpkin? Do we be Do we trust a clowns? Yeah. <laughs> It, it ends with the know. clown, right? But, yeah. like, the church has a lot to say about, you know, life after death. And so to engage in society with that, that curiosity that comes out in Halloween uh, is healthy for us. Did you two talk in your uh, theology classes, like, what, what the meaning of a spirit is? Be because, you know, all right, we hear Holy Spirit during the service. But this, Spirit Halloween, it, it, but what is a spirit? That's a good question. Um, so I've had some good mentors who remind me we have this idea of like God up in heaven, like looking down on us from a big throne and in all practicality, that probably isn't how it works, right? We know enough about the universe that like what's up and what's down. And uh, so maybe there's a part of heavenly reality that's spirit. And so we've got like... This is why we talk about, like, I feel my dad is right here right now, or 
uh, I feel the spirit of my grandpa right here with me. And um, I think those are ways for us to connect with something that's beyond ourselves and what we can see, but what's behind everything. So you have a thought on that? What a, what a spirit is? Is it just, is it a, is there a presence? Sure. I think a lot of times in scripture, you're going to like the Holy spirit would be talked about kind of, you know, it's, it's God's presence with us. It's, it's that sense that it's God's nudging us in specific directions and faithful directions. It's pointing us to Jesus. Um, those realities where you just kind of like, Hmm, something seems sacred, holy, divine right now. Like yeah. That would be the, the spirit's presence. But we're looking at this girl right over here. Uh, she saw that baby on your lap, and yeah. I think she thought it was kind of, uh, kind of real. Right, <laughs> a real Hi. baby. Happy Halloween, <laughs> mommy. <laughs> mommy. Yeah, that man has a creepy, a baby creepy on zombie his baby, a dead clown. <laughs> yeah, wow. why does he love him so much? I think he's a pastor at that <laughs> church at Southwest Could Wilbur. Be. What's that all about? So what do you say to people who uh, say, all right, it glorifies the, the, the dark, I, I, I will not celebrate, versus I feel like it can be both ways here. We, yeah. can, we can have fun with it and still not be struck down. Right. Like, I think, so it's funny this year, my, my son is dressing up as the devil, right? Like, that's oh. his costume, which is... Nice. We're going to have right? some fun with that, yeah. right, as a pastor. And I think, like, some of it comes you know to be like what's your understanding of what is the dark right like so for me i think when i read scripture and hear references to to the devil i feel like that is a that's a metaphor that character of, of satan the character of the devil represents the capacity for evil and darkness that exists in every single one of us so glorifying the darkness to me like it, it doesn't strike the same i don't believe there's a, a literal red guy jumping around in the fires underneath the ground with a pitchfork a trident right and horns. but it's it's again the capacity that each of us have to do evil things yeah. and and that's what jesus is warning us about that's what you know the scriptures warn us about and so yeah i'm not tempting uh, an evil spirit when I, you know, hang out on Halloween. There's nothing to glorify. Yeah. That just isn't part of my reality. Yeah. No worry of conjuring up things by going door to door. No. I, um, I'll go back to Martin Luther on this. He used to say, like, one of the best ways to deal with evil is to laugh at it. Mm. And that we should all be able to have some fun and laughter in life. And that actually... Mm -hmm helps the dark go away that yeah. we're enjoying and, life and and luther was a guy that believed in the literal devil and yeah. thought he encountered him often and yeah. threw ink at him and things yeah. like this Ooh. so what i like about this store spirit halloween is uh, way over on this end which would be the west end of the old uh, jc penny building Actually, I believe that's where ladies' lingerie used to be right in front of me. <laughs> you knew that part. Why, oh, yeah. why would I know, you know that? that? <laughs> anyway, so all of these, some young kids are there, hi. Acute costumes, yeah. you know, dolls, uh, raggedy ands, princesses. Uh, I see a Babies. scarecrow. Well, this is, this is starting <laughs> to fade into the... Uh, it, it gets darker as you head to the east, where... I took some shot earlier. I'm, let's roll this. We go from uh, costumes of a, uh, a priest, of a pope, and then a nun, and within one costume box. You know where this is going? Yeah, I have a hunch. <laughs> sexy nun. <laughs> but then everything <laughs> no over there thing. is sexy fireman, policeman, right. army For man, sure. and all that. I don't know how that all began. began. I don't know if we want to dig into that, but yeah. might that even create a, a worse image than this conjuring up the spirits is now everything's got to be sexy yeah i mean there is a, a downside to halloween right like that people use it as an excuse to be real creepy or whatever but i i think there's a lot of having fun there too i remember a memory in seminary a bunch of friends and i went out to the bar and dressed up for halloween and i dressed up as buddy christ and I got the most guff for how could you be so sacrilegious and be Jesus. And I'm like, I think Jesus liked to have some fun, didn't he? And 
Can't we have a little bit of fun too? So, meanwhile, dogma reference. Yeah, Justin is uh, going to hide the uh, the bag here. He already purchased the sexy pope pope costume. <laughs> the sexy pope. <laughs> <laughs> Again, no such thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> nope. So nope. Halloween on a Thursday, All Saints then would be the following Sunday. I suppose at that point. You won't be wearing your new costume Probably for Spirit not. Halloween. I guess not. Yeah. yeah. Well, we will be remembering all those good people who have died and made an impression on us. Mm-hmm. And if you choose not to celebrate Halloween and you want to, to celebrate something, it is Reformation Day. This is yeah. where Martin Luther on October 31st oh. nailed the, uh, the 95 Theses to the door of the Catholic Church in Wittenberg, Germany on October 31st and started the Reformation. So is, is that what you celebrate every October 31st? I have 31st? been known to celebrate Reformation Day and have thrown some Reformation Day parties in total, total defiance of Halloween. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could reform into that stuffed dummy over there. Oh, yeah. Maybe the gravestone ghoul over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many things you could do. Last word here on, on people who are struggling, especially parents. Am I doing the wrong thing by letting them dress, not as princesses and cowboys, but as sure. ghouls and skeletons and things? I think it's always a, a parental decision to make, right? I don't think, you know, if you're as a parent uncomfortable with something, if it's Halloween, if it's, you know, anything you're encountering as a parent, that's a a parent's choice to make and I'd always defer to to a parent to to do something that they feel comfortable with and I say I think you make your best judgment and if you talk about everything it's going to be just fine and we can have a little fun with it and okay we crossed the line there let's rein it in we've never crossed the line before right (laughs) our our lost souls still (laughs) missing here in this space what a perfect backdrop I this love was yeah, so and our good. thanks to spirit halloween the pop-up shop for halloween in the old jc penny building enter from the very southeast corner mm. take a right at the pothole and you'll be right there oh, should be which, yeah. one? <laughs> which one? Oh, he went there yeah. didn't yeah, he I did. speaking of conjuring up yeah. <laughs> evil things <laughs> have a good halloween I happy believe reformation day reformation day do we get? Is there any more uh, of the Vinji uh, Reformation beer? Can we? Yes, there is some still available. Intuition, Intuition mm-hmm. Brewery. Yeah. I believe I will see you for uh, All Saints Sunday. I believe I'm yeah. playing. You yeah. are playing, and shortly after that, on election night, Vinji is not only a polling station, and you can come there to drink the Martin Bruther Oktoberfest beer and eat. Delicious Ludafisk. Oh, that's yes. right. <laughs> delicious. Mm-hmm. So delicious. Conjuring evil spirits of mm-hmm. Ludafisk. Yes. Again, you do you <laughs> when it comes to Ludafisk. <laughs> you might feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't think you want to drink too much before you go to the polls, though. Let's let's try to remain level-headed. Just bring your clown that. friend and you'll feel happy. Mm-hmm. Everybody show your favorite. Ah. Oh, oh, no. Happy oh, oh, <laughs> Let's go. We should go shop around. Let's do it. Let's see what we I'm can in. find. I'm in. Empty soul girl. Not my can, favorite. Can you save her? No. She's lost. <laughs> What'd you find? Oh, no. Slim the killer clown. Seven feet tall. They need a pastor. Someone has to Okay, well. What uh, kind of a message would you... Uh, Give these two. Don't do it. <laughs> Something on my shoulder? I don't know. What is it? I think you're okay. Huh? My head is too big. Well, what do you have to say about that? That's the worst tyrant I've ever seen. <laughs> There we go. Pimp my sermon. <laughs> now sit right back and you'll hear a tale. Look at all this. Tune in next time when we talk about marijuana. This one makes me feel a little uncomfortable. It should. If I only had a brain. 
<laughs> Fun house of terror. He's bringing a baseball bat. Just in case. Oh. What's this? So, oh, look behind you. Ah! Wheel of fate. What is your fate? Oh, what's it gonna be? You get to oh. live. Sorry. Oh, you're dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's true. It's true. That was when I started working with Justin. <laughs> and we're out.